Hi everybody, thanks for watching again. Uh, Pete here, we're uh, September 5th. We're gonna start uh, chopping earlage here tomorrow, or at least that's the plan. Uh, we're still haven't started back up on silage yet. It's not quite ready yet to be chopped for silage, but there is a few fields of corn that are ready for earlage. So we'll, we'll be starting with that tomorrow. Uh, that pile is gonna be coming right here so you can see here here this is our corn silage pile and this is our so this is actually high moisture corn right here so this is just corn ground up basically combined corn and what we'll be doing tomorrow is earlage which is the corn plus the cob itself and a little bit of the leaf and the husk will come with it too when we get going i'll show you guys that so this is actually the north side of our silage pile. I thought I'd show you guys that. So we're we're actually feeding from this side now. We were feeding from the south and when we started chopping silage then we opened the north side up and we'll start feeding the other way. And then this is the high moisture corn pile here. We just opened that here a couple hours ago. Almost no spoilage on it or not, none that I can even see anyway. So pretty happy about that. It's not hot at all, completely cool, which is what we want. We tried earlage on uh, Monday, but earlage wasn't quite ready yet. Uh, most of the field's ready, but a lot of the drought stressed corn is still pretty wet. So we covered the few loads they did, and we're going to try starting it, trying that again here in, I don't know, about a week or so, I suppose. Next. Maybe this weekend, maybe next week Monday, I'm gonna have them try earlage again, but we are planning to start silage again here this morning. We opened the pile last last night. Uh, they got some of their equipment here already. There's two choppers are here. Most of their trucks and trailers are here. Uh, we'll start on silage with two choppers today and there's a third one coming tomorrow morning. And then hopefully, by the end of the weekend, beginning of next week, we'll start on earlage, and then we'll have two two choppers going on earlage, and two choppers going on silage. It looks like the weather is pretty good, so I think they should be able to get a lot done with the three of them. And I hope to get quite a bit of video of that. Be putting on uh, about 100 feet of plastic here so I figured I'd set you guys up here you can watch them dump trucks and watch us put some plastic on
You're probably wondering why we spend the time to put the plastic and tires on our silage pile and why we have those big tractors driving around on there. But the, the reason we do that is uh, we want to get all the air out of the silage so that it can properly ferment and when air is, when there is air uh, in the silage or if you don't cover it and it's exposed to air on the outside it affects the fermentation process and the silage will actually start rotting instead of fermenting and when it ferments then it uh, it stores better and it also becomes a uh, better feed for the cow so it's more digestible uh, so when we put the plastic on we put two layers on as you would have seen in the video there so we put one th thin layer of clear plastic which is what they call an oxygen barrier then we put the white and black plastic on top and that's a thicker more durable plastic and it's got some uh, webbing in it to make it a little bit stronger and then we put tires on it to keep that plastic down and to keep all the air from underneath the, the plastic and you would have seen on that video there it takes quite a few people to to uh, do it right because that uh, especially in North Dakota it seems like it's windy every time we want to put plastic on but you want to put it on as fast as, as you can to, uh, because the fermentation process will start immediately uh, so when we do do that we will put on a ro it's a roll of 200 by uh, 100 of the white plastic and the yellow is a little bit uh, smaller or shorter so that we don't over have the seams in the same spot all the time uh, and we'll typically do that with about, uh, about 10 to 15 of our own guys and what we've been doing here the last couple years is we uh, we've actually been having the the local wrestling club help us out putting on plastic so they they help us put on plastic and we make a donation to the wrestling club and that's been working really good actually they come with 15 to 20 kids and some of the parents will come too and the more people the better it seems like because you can get it covered faster and it's it helps holding that plastic down especially when it's windy uh, so it's yeah it's been working out really good really happy that they're that they wanted to try it last year now we did it again and hopefully they continue continue to do that in the future because it is a big help help for us because as you can see there's and there's quite a few tires here to to throw around and you can see down at the end there we we don't have everything covered yet because we didn't have enough tires but we will cover that as we feed from the north side we'll take those tires and put them on those open spaces and uh, we've got on the pile on the field also we'll need some more and we'll we'll put those on as we go here but we'll uh, take you to the field here in a little bit and we'll show you so some of the earlage harvesting what they're doing there and see how it's going so the way the head works is it basically it pulls the stock down through the header and it pulls the cob off and pulls it in and augers it into the machine basically. Monday afternoon we quit chopping about two hours ago I suppose it started raining around noon a little bit before noon you can see we've had quite a bit of rain already the yard's pretty wet so we'll be out for a few days we'll uh, we'll start earlage again as soon as it dries up but I think we're gonna wait on silage until next week there's a uh, probably 40 40 acres left on the two fields they were working on of the corn that was ready and the, the rest still needed a week or so so we were we were planning to wait anyways once those two fields were done we were able to get this field of ryegrass bailed up just before it started raining so small field only 80 acres but he was able to get 320 bales made on there which I'm pretty happy with that we first cutting we had 80 bales 
and we did this is our second cutting here because it it had been so dry that it was this grass was actually brown at one point and it greened up after we got a, a couple of rains and it actually turned out pretty good for second cutting here and if we got some decent weather maybe we'll get a, a third cutting here before winter we'll see he he wrapped he uh, bailed it with a, a baler that's got a wrapper on the back of it so he bales and wraps it and with one machine works pretty good I didn't get any footage of that but maybe if we cut some more I will be able to get some video of that that'll probably be it for this video I'd call this the uh, second chopping video I guess we'll uh, probably see you again when we start up for the third time or maybe I'll get a little bit of the earlich more of the earlich uh, in there too we'll see otherwise it'll be uh, next video will be chopping video when we start up for the third time I guess but we'll see you then thanks for watching